Okay, this lesson is interior angles in convle convex polygons. <laughs> Easy for me to say, right? This is actually uh, a lot simpler than it sounds. The idea here is that we're talking about basic shapes. We're talking about shapes that, that you usually think of when you think of the word shapes. Um, a convex polygon just means a shape that's formed out of straight sides and that doesn't uh, curve in or angle in like, uh, say, I don't know, a shape like this that has this inward sort of a bump here or sort of a corner. This would be a concave, like a cave goes in. This is a concave polygon, and we're not talking about concave polygons. We're talking just about convex polygons. So convex polygons only sort of bump out. And the interior angles in convex polygons um, are actually pretty easy to calculate, assuming we're talking about regular polygons. And a regular polygon means that all of the angles are the same. So if you, uh, for instance, uh, say a, a four-sided figure here, a square, a square is a regular polygon. A irregular polygon uh, that was four-sided might look something like this, where it's four sides, but they're all different sides, and they're all different angles, and so forth. This is not a regular polygon. A regular polygon, all the angles match. That's why these are all marked with uh, the little tick marks or the double angle marks or something that show that each of these angles are congruent. Um, if we take a look at the triangle, for instance, you'll see that all three of these are marked with three little arcs showing that all three of those angles are congruent. Now, there's actually a formula for calculating the number of degrees in an interior of interior angles in a polygon, and it's actually simpler than you might think. The formula is n, oops, get my pen back here, n minus 2 times 180 degrees. And what that means is you take the number of sides, n, n equals the number of sides, you subtract 2 from it, and then you multiply the answer by 180. And we can take a look at these uh, basic shapes here and see how that works. If we have a triangle, a triangle, of course, has three sides. So we'd take 3 minus 2, which, of course, would give us 1. And then we take that 1 times 180, and we get 180. And a triangle, as we already know, has 180 degrees. So we can see it fits there pretty well. If we take a look at a square, a square should have 360 degrees. And a square is four sides. So we take 4 minus 2. And that gives us 2 times 180 is 360 degrees, which, again, is what we expected to see. This is a pentagon. A pentagon. Pen Pentagon. A pentagon is five sides, so we'd have five minus two, which is three, and then three times 180 is 540. So a pentagon is 540 degrees, and then a hexagon. Hexagon is six sides, so we have six minus four, or six minus two, I mean, which is four. And 4 times 180 is 720. So a hexagon has 720 degrees on its internal measurements. So you can see that's pretty pretty easy to figure out the total number of degrees. And then if you want to find the degree measure of any angle in there, you just take that total number of degrees and divide it by the number of sides. So for instance, with the square, we had 360 degrees. If we take that 360 and divide it by the number of sides in a square, which of course is 4, right? We have 360 divided by 4 gives us 90 degrees. And of course, we can see with a square, each of our angles is 90 degrees. And with an equilateral triangle, which is what this is, each angle is 60 degrees. We've talked about that before. And so on and so forth. We could figure it for the five-sided and for the six-sided, just divide the total number of degrees by the number of sides in the shape. So you can see it's a lot simpler than it looks. And uh, we're going to apply this to the example questions here in just a minute.